Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be exploring the production cycle of a video game. Now, this may differ depending on the game company, but generally they all follow the same structure. Okay, so let's have a look at what that is. And that is the pre-production, production, testing, launch, and post-launch phases. Okay, each of these have their own um, things that happen during them, and they also differ in duration. So the first phase of production is pre-production, okay? This is before you actually start making the game. And pre-production involves a number of things, okay? This is where you design the game's core mechanic and experience, okay? This is where the designers are basically starting to list out all the things that the game has. You, may, you know, you might be drawing down levels on paper, writing up the design documents. Um, you'll also be developing a production roadmap. This is pretty much a timeline that you're going to try and uh, follow along, uh, listing out all the different dates that you want certain objectives to be hit by, uh, as well as, of course, the date that you're expecting to finish the game. As well as this, you might want to start also looking at what sort of demographics you are aiming for um, when developing the game, as that is going to influence how you go about game production, um, as well as marketing later on. And this is also may be the time we develop a prototype. Now, a prototype is very important as if you are working with new mechanics or a new idea that you're not sure if it's gonna work or not, develop a prototype, which is basically a very bare bones version of the game. You know, you probably don't have any art in it. Uh, you probably have just simple shapes for the levels. Um, this is basically just to test out the mechanics and see if it's fun, see if it works. Then once you are done with pre-production, you can move on to the production phase. And this is pretty much the meat of a game's development. This is where you are actually starting to create the game, okay? You build upon the concepts and design in pre-production and start to create the full game. Okay, and this is where the entire team is in motion, okay? The coders are coding, the artists are animating, texturing, modeling, the sound designers are creating music and sound effects and working with the designers to implement that in the game, and you have the designers also iterating upon their designs as the game progresses, okay? Adding more things, designing more levels. Everybody is working full steam ahead to create the game. Then we move on to the testing phase. And in reality, the testing phase should generally happen alongside production, okay? This isn't um, where production stops and you start testing, okay? Testing is something you always want to be doing. Um, and this is with your QA testers that you bring in and to basically just check to see if the game is playing the way it should, okay? The designers have an experience in mind when designing the game and the testing is there to basically reinforce that or if the testers, you know, think something different of the game, then the designers may um, lean more into that or they may modify the game to more narrowly align with their vision. And since we're talking about game development, there are going to be numerous issues and bugs that you're going to run into that hopefully these testers are going to be able to spot. So after production and after testing, you finally have the launch phase, okay? And this is where you are finalizing the game. You are squashing bugs. You are feature locking, which is basically where you say, okay, we are adding no more things to the game. We are not adding any more art. We're not adding any more textures. We're not adding more sound. We're not adding any more levels or characters or items, but rather we are going to be focusing on refining what we have already. Okay. Maybe going over what you've done in the past to make sure it's up to standard. Uh, again, like I said, squashing bugs, make sure the game runs right. And then it's time to publish. Okay. The game is sent out there to the world. Now the post launch phase, um, this doesn't really have a time frame per se okay this depends entirely on your game some games you know they might launch it and then you know they might do one or two patches other games they might be supporting it for a decade afterwards okay and this is where you start listening to the community feedback on the game as you're going to be going from just probably a handful of testers to thousands or millions and you can also then start fixing bugs and sending out patches, okay? Because chances are there are still going to be many bugs that have managed to slip past production um, that your players will discover. And this also gives you time to start working on updates for the game and future DLC to basically retain that player base. Especially if it's a multiplayer game, players are going to be expecting constant support throughout the years, um, as that will, of course, then keep them playing your game and wanting more content.
So that is a look at the production cycle of a video game. And once again, this can differ depending on the company, depending on the size of the game, uh, depending on if it is a large company or if it's just a solo developer. Uh, but generally, this is the way that uh, game development goes. You have pre-production where you basically set up your prototype and start designing. Production where you start creating the game. Testing, which happens alongside production, um, where you're squashing bugs and making sure that the game runs the way it was designed to do. And then you have the launch where you basically go, okay, we're adding in no more features. We might spend a month or so working on squashing bugs and refining the game and then launching it. And then after that, depending on the type of game it is, the type of company, um, you may spend you know, a month or so on post-launch updates or you might spend years. So... Thank you very much for watching.